Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to get started. It's one o'clock sharp because uh, after me, there's Chi Brown, who's presenting as well on, the, on another core initiative. Um, my name is Wim, Wim Leers. I, uh, I'm one of the API First Initiative coordinators. Matteo is the other one. Unfortunately, Matteo isn't here today. He is uh, in a better He's, he's in a better climate than this one. He's in Mallorca at home today, I think. So I'll, you'll have to do with me, I'm sorry. Um, so the goal is to give you an update of where we are at, where we are going, um, and just to give everyone a good sense of how things are progressing. Um, questions, there will not be a whole lot of time because uh, there's another session right after this one. But uh, you can come and find me or anybody else who works uh, or helps out with the API First initiative if you have concrete questions as well, of course. So the things we'll cover, the vision, the, the, the overarching goal, then translated to specific goals, a roadmap of things that we are trying to get done uh, as fast as possible, the ecosystem surrounding API First, and then some outstanding challenges and open discussion as time allows. So before we do that, actually, I have a quick questionnaire. We have, I think, well, I'm relying on somebody else there who counts the number of people in the room, but basically I want to have a sense of how, my, how many of you are using which parts of API first um, and uh, who are just interested, who have experience and whatnot. So who of you, raise your hand, have worked on decoupled uh, Drupal projects in the past uh, at all? It seems like about um, 20 or so. So um, that seems like about a fifth probably, so interesting. Uh, if yes, was it more than a year ago? Uh, about eight. Uh, more than six months ago? Or less than six months ago? Seems all about the same, interesting. Um, and the Drupal, the, the decoupled aspect, was it critical to the overall project, like the decoupled uh, part of the project? Was it essential or was it an add-on? Essential? Okay. Uh, about 15, probably. Um, if you haven't worked with decoupled Drupal yet in the past, who of you would like to? Interesting, only 40%, I guess. So some of you are here just to hear what it's all about, I guess, uh, which is fine. If you have been using decoupled Drupal, were you using the core REST module or something else? Core REST? Uh, it seems most of you. Um, by 20, I guess. Um, were you using the Contrib REST UI module to configure it, to set it up? Who has used Core REST UI? Or, sorry, the Contrib module REST UI. Seems like only a handful of you know about that module. Um, did you not use, uh, did the Core REST API noticeably improve in the past year or so, in your experience? If you've worked with it, did it get better? No hands, that's pretty sad. <laughs> Well, okay, thank you, I guess. <laughs> um, so that should have been this. And have you used JSON API or have you used JSON API instead of Core REST? Okay, so about 15, I think. Um, if you haven't used Core REST and you haven't used JSON API, have you used GraphQL? Three, four, five people. Um, have you used relaxed web services? CouchDB. <laughs> Two people, three, four. Okay, uh, or have you used a combination of all of the above? Basically, just some JSON API, some REST, some GraphQL, some relaxed. One, one, two, three people. Okay, so now that, that's interesting, right? So we get, have some sense of what people are actually using. So we offer you a lot of options and that is actually kind of the vision. Uh, this is what Dries has stated in the past. He believes that it's important to have web services be first class in Drupal so that Drupal has top notch support for APIs and people are um, able to use them really well, really easily with great DX and whatnot. So API first is about being able to access your data, uh, your configuration and whatnot via APIs um, very easily. So the overarching vision is for us to have an um, unparalleled API first platform. The point is any data that Drupal stores manages, you can retrieve restfully in any format, so the JSON format that Drupal Core ships with, the XML format that Drupal Core ships with, but also the help plus JSON format that is an optional module in Drupal Core, um, but then also not just have pure representations of data stored in Drupal, but also have it available in multiple flavors. Drupal Core REST does it in the HTTP purest way, but there's also the JSON API spec, which is also RESTful, but 
has a particular um, set of conventions. Both of those are RESTful, but there's also non-RESTful ways of interacting with data. Examples are GraphQL um, and CouchDB. Um, but then CouchDB is specifically for a narrow use case, offline first, replication and syncing. And all of this should be available using any authentication mechanism, basic auth, cookie, OAuth2, whatever the future brings. And so if we get to this point, then you can point any SDK, any tool at Drupal and have, easily interact with it, get data out, get data in, which would make it a great connector, a great hub for everything um, to be working together. So that is kind of the whole goal. And increasingly we are seeing um, that people not just want this, but need this. Uh, we have seen a lot of sessions about it. At DrupalCon Baltimore there were 12 sessions, one training. I haven't checked actually for this DrupalCon. There was an entire uh, event just for decoupled Drupal. So um, it seems the need is strongly increasing. The goals that we have, um, we, we try to take those, this over, the overarching vision and translate it into must have, should have, could have, because you need to start somewhere, right? Um, so the first thing was Drupal 8 shipped with the REST API, but it wasn't very usable, so that was the first, uh, uh, the first thing to get done. Then, of course, we want to go further, we want to make it best in class, and we want to have excellent documentation. So those are the must-haves, and happy to say that it is actually usable now. We're making good progress on making it best in class. And documentation automatically generated for your uh, content types, for your entity types, um, that is also proceeding pretty well. Should-haves, JSON API, we would love to see that uh, uh, be used far more uh, because it solves certain problems that the core REST module has. Uh, for example, you have collection uh, querying, filtering, sorting, and so on, which Drupal Core REST doesn't. Um, so that's also a very important one. Well, glad to say that there's also a stable module for that, uh, mostly thanks to Matteo and uh, Daniel, who's in the back and looking at his phone and not hearing this. <laughs> uh, and also many other contributors, of course. Um, GraphQL is also shaping up really well and they're about to release a first stable version. So if you haven't tried that in the past because it hasn't had a stable release yet, well, it's about to get one. Um, there's a workflows initiative with which the person who's making a photo over there now uh, is um, working on a lot along with several people here in the front. Um, that is great and it enables new possibilities, but we also need to be able to do those things via APIs. So UUID support in Core REST doesn't exist yet. We should have that. Revision support doesn't exist in Core REST nor JSON API. We should have that as well. So there's more work to be done there. Um, that hasn't really started yet, but as you can see, quite a few things are taking shape. Um, Things that we should have, or at this point could have, OAuth2 support. Um, that is also progressing really well. CouchDB support, um, I was just talking to Dixon here at the front um, about that module. Uh, it turns out that is just uh, at the beginning of September, it has had its first beta release. They're using it in production, so CouchDB support, if you want to use that, the Relax Web Services module in Contrib, it's also getting to a really good, good place. So if we compare that, with six months ago, there's quite a bit more weightlifting going on, as in progress being made, um, one, another, another goal reached and so on. So we are making good progress. So hopefully this gives you a sense of where we were, where we are today. Um, so why these things? Well, for core REST, the reason we have that is uh, it supports multiple formats. Sometimes you want to have a format specific for your needs. It supports any kind of data, so it can be used for non-entity data, basically. And it's super configurable, which is great in some use cases. And kind of juxtaposed with that is JSON API, which doesn't support multiple formats, which is not very or not as configurable, but it makes your life a whole lot more easier. Uh, it doesn't require extensive configuration and so on. So because it is opinionated, you can have better tooling, you can avoid bike shedding and researching uh, various competing uh, potential tools. It just answers those things because it has an agreed, set of, uh, an agreed upon set of uh, decisions, basically. Collection support, as I mentioned, is something that REST doesn't have. So uh, JSON API um, is, is a very, very um, easy to use module in comparison to REST API. GraphQL um, is... Uh, at this point, really, the thing, mostly used for UI components that then fetch their data and just the data that they need, which is harder to achieve with core REST and JSON API. And REST is already in core, it's in stable core. JSON API is currently uh, stable in contrib. Um, 
we were working on maturing it in 8.4 contrib, and hopefully uh, we're going to get it into Drupal 8.5 core, um, which would make your lives a whole lot easier. GraphQL is uh, about to be released as a stable module. I haven't checked today's Twitter feed, but um, I think it's going to happen any day now. So these are REST API, JSON API, GraphQL. These are all modules to interact with data. Uh, but the problem also is that sometimes it's hard to figure out how to do that interaction. Documentation is often missing. Um, and that's why we have OpenAPI. We're working on getting that to a stable place in 8.4 Contrib. So the point is that starting was very painful like a year ago because documentation was lacking, things were brittle. Well, REST is much more stable now. JSON API is stable. Documentation via OpenAPI, which works for both REST and JSON API, um, so this works for both this and this. Um, well, that will make things a whole lot easier. So hopefully that gives you a sense of why we are working on specific things. If you then look at uh, what we are currently working on, what our current focus is to, to go to the next level, kind of. REST API, we're working to make it best in class. What is actually missing right now is translation support. So you, it's, it's somewhat possible, but it's not fully supported yet to retrieve, for example, a Dutch or French or German translation of a node. But you, can, you definitely cannot patch it, post it, so you can't modify it. Modifying configuration is impossible, configuration entities. You can retrieve it, retrieve them, but you can't modify them. File uploads are not supported. Um, and the thing is, because JSON API builds upon this infrastructure that Core provides, the same um, gaps, translations, config modification, and file uploads are also not yet supported in JSON API. Obviously, these are pretty important, so we are working to add them to core, and then JSON API will benefit as well. Uh, we are working on them, but it, it takes time because we need to uh, expand APIs in Drupal core in the subsystems that all of this builds upon, so everything needs to support it in order for the REST APIs to support this. Uh, for JSON API, the key thing that is missing, besides the things that are already in REST, is comprehensive test coverage, which, uh, to be fair, REST didn't have at first either. At this point, it is almost at 100% coverage in the sense that all entity types have a very solid set of test coverage so that we know that we break things uh, if we do. For JSON API, we still need to do that, but because core already paved the path, it should be much, much faster for JSON API, and that will help it get into core. GraphQL, um, what is missing there is more sites using it, more feedback. Uh, Amazi is using it uh, in production. They're using it very productively. They're using it to, well, they're very satisfied. Um, but we need more people and with more different use cases to also use it um, and give feedback and so on, of course. The next one is excellent documentation via OpenAPI, as I mentioned before. The interesting thing is that just six months ago, um, there was competition. We didn't have a clear path forward. There was the REST API doc module from a year and a half ago, the Schemata module, the Doxon module, and the Open API module, and then I think a few more sandboxes. So there was no clear consensus on how to move forward. At this point, there is. So we are standardizing on the Open API module, which is also a spec that we didn't invent. Uh, so it also integrates with other tools. Um, so REST API further gaps being addressed, JSON API, the same gaps plus tests, GraphQL also being stabilized, and Open API getting to a point where it is actually working for all these cases. Um, of course, that is a lot of work to, to get all of these things moving forward, and yet more, like uh, UUID revision support, CouchDB support in core and whatnot. So we would love to see more help, and the good news is that uh, Acquia is hiring more people to help out, specifically with API First Drupal, so if you are interested in that, uh, let us know. Um, the people working on all these things, so core REST, um, relaxed web services, and so on, but specifically the things that we've been working on so far, uh, Matteo, e 0 Ipso, and I are the initiative coordinators, uh, and we are working on various parts. Daniel is also working very much on REST and serialization and JSON API, so pretty much all over, as we know Daniel to be on, over all the things. Ted Bowman is working in Open API, but also core REST and serialization, and Damien Kloip, Damien Lee, he's also helping out with serialization and REST. So if you are specifically seeing problems with any of these areas, or you have feedback, or you have a feature request, or you don't want to help out and you don't know where to get started, come talk to these specific people. Uh, in IRC, you can find all of us. The ecosystem. So what we talked about so far was the overall vision, like 
Drupal should be able to support all of these things, um, but there's also tooling being built around it to make it easier to get started. Um, some of the tooling is Waterwheel. Uh, it's a it's a library to a JavaScript library to make it easier to start talking to Drupal core REST and to Drupal's JSON API so to take away some of the um, the Drupalisms uh, to make it easier to get started and to make requests in just the right way and so on. Distributions, uh, distributions to make it a whole lot easier to get started. Contenta um, is the short version is Contenta is a massive productivity boost if you want to build, if you are familiar with Drupal and you want to build a decoupled uh, Drupal site. It has example apps for various JavaScript libraries, um, makes it very easy to get a sense of how that works. That specific library, that specific SDK being integrated with Drupal. Reservoir is specifically targeted at non-Drupalists. Um, it aims for simplicity, so it, it has, it's far less feature complete, feature rich than content. It chooses to focus on simpler things. Um, it's a different audience. Probably for you guys, most of you would uh, be best uh, to use content. I would say give it a try, play with the example apps, um, get a sense of what you can do. Um, those are the, the key ecosystem things, water wheel, content, or reservoir, but outstanding challenges, things we haven't even really begun to tackle or um, don't know really how to begin to tackle or just because we haven't gotten to it yet. Things like image styles for responsive images, should, should they be embedded in responses or not? There are some reasons to do it one way, some reasons to do it another way. Um, if you have entities and you're patching or creating entities, um, Things like validation error responses, how do you expose that properly on the client side when you do that patch or post request and how to present that. You need to get enough metadata in order to be able to represent that clearly. That's also not yet in a good place. Drupal core uh, is not yet using any of the REST APIs, so it's only you guys using it essentially at this point. So ideally Drupal core would be using it. And the, the scariest of them all, API versioning, which nobody has solved yet. Uh, not in Drupal, not outside Drupal, not anywhere. Um, so how do we solve that for Drupal where any site builder can add new field types and can change a single value to a multi-value field and so on? That's uh, stuff of nightmares, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that's, I hope that's a, that gives you a good sense of where things are at, where things are going, what we're working on. And I talked fast, I'm sorry, but I wanted to leave some time for questions or discussion. So, any questions, any feedback, any concerns, any frustrations? Or maybe everyone is here for the next talk. <laughs> this is a question, uh, maybe just for you, Wim, or maybe people in the room. How do you feel progress over time has been? Are we moving too fast, too slow, just at the right pace? Or do we need to move even faster? And can you be a little bit more specific in what sense? For, for core REST, the overall API first stuff? I think Drupal as a project? <laughs> the overall API first stuff. OK. Um, I think, uh, interestingly enough, quite a few things are, are moving forward really fast simultaneously, like GraphQL is moving forward, JSON API is moving forward, OAuth is moving forward, CouchDB support is moving forward. So a lot of things are moving forward quite nicely. To me personally, I'm working on core REST and trying to get that to move to a really good place and JSON API to a really good place, which requires fixing a lot of subsystem edge cases that weren't taken into account when those subsystems were first built. And I wish those things were going faster because it takes a lot of time and effort back and forth, consensus building as well. So that part I wish could go faster. I'm not sure it can, because that's the thing about open source and consensus building. Uh, if I think something is ready, oh, but apparently then Andre thinks of something that I hadn't thought of, and then we should fix that, and then Daniel thinks of something. And that's the thing about uh, Drupal. Lots of people come together and think of additional edge cases, which makes the whole much better, much more reliable, more robust but it makes more, takes more time. Everything was crystal clear, or really everybody came for Gibran's talk. Uh, Daniel, I have a really simple question. How do we dock food? I mean, you said we should dock food. Yeah. How do we dock food? I think you had a really great, great idea a few weeks ago where you said it would be interesting if as soon as you install the core REST module, we would change, for example, the, the node form to not call PHP code, but to an 
a REST request internally to save the node. And then if the validation error, so that was one of the things that we don't really have in a great place, the error response is in case of a validation error. Like if that were being dogfed and you would get a validation error, that would have to continue to work the same way. So we would have to fix this and we would know when it would break. So that could be an interesting, an interesting way to do it or other UIs like layout builder stuff that is being worked on and so on, for example. Matt, my name. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it's obvious to me, maybe not to anybody else, that the core REST API was not designed, at least initially, to be used to build like a decoupled website, mm -hmm. just the structured responses and whatever else. Um, and JSON API getting more stable is, do you see a future where we like, deprecate core REST API and that is replaced with something like JSON API? Um, I, I would like the answer to be yes, because JSON API is like, there's fewer things that are configurable, therefore fewer edge cases, therefore it is more stable. Um, the problem is though that JSON API only supports entities. And so some, I actually am surprised myself, but quite a few people are using, are creating custom REST resources to generate a specific XML response that they need to integrate with some external system. That is apparently a thing and it, like, that's fine and it makes sense, but so it's, it's uh, I think we would maybe deprecate the REST API or the core REST module for entity use cases as soon as we have JSON API and core, because it is just far more pleasant to work with. You don't have to, to create a REST export view um, to be able to list all comments for a node, for example. You can just make a request with a specific uh, query string in the URL, and then you can get just that data. So I would say we would probably recommend JSON API over REST for certain use cases. And Matt is asking, is there any timeline for that? Well, it depends on when JSON API is in core, hopefully 8.5. Yeah. Um, no firm timeline, as is the case in open source. Uh, related to that, I think, I think we can do a lot better job as, uh, as kind of a decoupled community, if you may, to like put together resources and document all those different use cases, mm -hmm. help users to really understand like use Contenta for that, or use JSON, just JSON API, or relaxed web services for this and that, and like have a comprehensive yep. place to really guide users, yep. I think, because there's so much activity and there's so much progress right. everywhere. I think we've become a lot better at yep. collaborating over the past six, six nine months, yep. and there's come some really good stuff out of that. But I think we can do a much better job at sort of guiding. Yep. Uh, I think that's kind of the, the task. Uh, I don't want to put words in the mouth of the content people who are present, but I think that's kind of the, the goal of content yeah. to, to show how to do it and what is the current best practice. And if something is no longer the best practice, I'm assuming content will um, evolve towards the better practice. But, but that's a, a best practice for a particular use case still, where you have like the traditional it doesn't do much with offline uh, yep. first, or it doesn't do much where you decouple two Drupal sites, and you want to ref that's right. also a form of decoupling, so right? So maybe you should write some blog yeah. posts yeah. about uh, <laughs> GarageDB. <laughs> so you just uh, propose to get right. more work yourself. <laughs> um, another question, so you list like image styles and stuff. Um, do you have any idea about revision support? Like. Do you think it's important for a decoupled application? I think uh, Dick Olson will have some thoughts about that. Um, it's important for different use cases, I think. Um, when you like decouple two Drupal sites or two systems, not necessarily a browser front end and a back end, then certainly you need revision support. That's also a form of decoupling, right? We shouldn't have this. Uh, uh, there are many use cases. Um, so I think it's a good feature, but it's also like exposing that and working on that in, in, through our APIs would also fix a lot of stuff in core. Yep. Like it's one of those things where we you know that we've discovered that throughout the workflow initiative, you know, we have to fix all these things and exposing revisions and giving people the opportunity would then uncover and just fix a lot of good stuff. And then whether or not you want to expose revisions on your 
published site. I think there were some good points raised there by the Contenta team in their presentation. Probably not a good idea, but that's one use case, right? Yeah. I, I guess the answer would be it depends. <laughs> Hey, Wim. Thanks for the good uh, summary on API's first initiative. Um, I have two questions. Uh, one is very mm -hmm. short. Given that that uh, headless CMS is so popular, I've mm -hmm. seen in Dries' uh, presentation that it, it grows 500% year on year. Mm -hmm. Why is this room so small? <laughs> um, that's an interesting question. And more interesting than perhaps is that these numbers are like only about 20% of the people in the room actually have worked on decoupled projects, if everybody was awake and raised their hands, of course, but I'm assuming that is the case. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, um, yeah, it's impressive. Um, Your second question? My second question. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Hi, uh, so, um, according to the Dries presentation this morning, it looks like we are targeting to decouple the admin inter interface of Drupal. Mm -hmm. um, is, does that mean that we're going to have to uh, navigate differently in the future? Or you mean UI wise, navigate differently? No, or? sorry. Um, as in this initiative, is, is it positioning oh. ourselves in the right direction towards that, or? Ah, yeah, uh, okay, so the question is basically, is this initiative helping to make that possible at all? Yeah. I think that's where you're getting at. Yeah, or, I mean, or are we going to depend on what framework we choose, or are we gonna have to do something? Oh, uh, well, this, this is basically just making that a possibility, so if this is making such decoupled right. admin interfaces possible, it's also making Things like content are possible, um, React front ends possible. Like it's making all of those things possible without good APIs to get the data out of Drupal and get data into Drupal. Okay. You can't do any of it. Right. So uh, I would say yes, this is a necessary step along the way, but this is not specifically to enable that. This is to enable a lot of things that otherwise are not possible or just are very painful to do. This should make it so that it's painless. Uh, maybe so, delightful to get to interact with Drupal. Okay, so hopefully when we get to that point, we'll be ready to support yes. that. Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. Cool. I think I should wrap it up and maybe there's one more. You, you remember your question? <laughs> um, the question was, um, it's more general about okay. Drupal, but given that you are so uh, involved in, um, in this initiative, um, you know, and, and the, the popularity of API uh, first sites. Uh, it's, it's not only that we are making Drupal more and more able to work uh, headless, it's, uh, it feels sometimes like that we, we are beheading Drupal, um, which may be a good thing, um, but I, I would like to hear your views on that. How does it feel, beheading Drupal? If that's uh, oh, oh. <laughs> wow, okay. I'm not sure if, how I should feel about that, to be honest. Uh, um, I, I don't, okay, so I would say that I'm not beheading Drupal. I would say I'm turning Drupal into a multi-legged and multi-armed thing, uh, so you can do more things, an octopus kind of. Um, I don't know, but. Uh, I, yeah, okay, that's perfect. I'm giving Drupal more heads, uh, as in the ability to grow more heads. Um, yeah. Yeah, indeed. Thank you.